Asmund Gold declares we're winning. Uh, following report that admits Hollywood executives are battling fans. Do you agree with him? Uh, I think so. But uh, like I said earlier, it's like there will always be like those black rocks, those vanguards, like siphoning off profits from other businesses they have. And they're like, they keep like just, you know, reallocating it for DEI and ESG. It's like mm-hmm. s- someone has, to, it's those people in those institutions that need to be let go or need to be stopped because like, otherwise it's just going to be an endless cycle until like they're hoping that one day the society will be, society will get, you know, in it'll get so ingrained with society or people um, in the younger generation are just, just think that ESG and DEI content is actually the normal thing. I think that's what they're banking on doing. So yes and no. Yes, that we're quitting that they're losing a lot of money right now. But the thing is, they're mm-hmm. just siphoning off money from profitable endeavors and putting it to DEI and ESG. Yeah, I, that's I, I agree with that. All right, let's go ahead and read this word over here. It says, YouTuber and streamer Asmin Go declared we're winning in the wake of a report that admitted that Hollywood executives are battling fans. Variety's Adam B. Very penned an article titled Toxic Fandom, How Hollywood is Battling Fans who are just out for blood from social media boot camps, which is something that we went over earlier. Uh, in an article, varies un- unnamed marketing executives who informed it comes uh, with territory, but it's gotten incredibly loud in the last couple of years. People are just out for blood regardless. If they think purity and the first version will never be replaced or you're done, uh, you've done something to upset the canon of a beloved franchise and they're going to take you down for doing so. So here's the thing. Lord of the Rings, there will never be a reboot that will even come close to what Peter Jackson did in the early 2000s. I think mm-hmm. the, those movies, they're timeless. They still hold up to this date. Gra- uh, what's it called again? The CGI, some of it is a little wonky now, but it's still really, it's still really, really good. It still yep. holds up. The acting yep. is really good. The writing is really good. And do you know what makes the movie good? It's because Peter Jackson says that he doesn't want to change what the original narrative was from Tolkien. He said that he doesn't want to put in any of his ideology. He doesn't want to put him put in any of the shit. He just wants to make it faithful as much as he could in movie form. And it worked. And mm-hmm. that's why when shit comes out like Rings of Power, we complain about it is because it's fucking garbage. And you're working with appendices that are like fucking two pages. What the hell, man? Let's continue. Mm-hmm. Asmongo reacted to the comments stating, that's exactly right. I'm glad they understand. He continued, so the problem is that the fan base wants you to maintain what the original story was and not to change the story. So if you want, we can actually... Ha- is this a clip? It is Studio- a clip. Let's go and watch this then. Let's go and watch this. Studios, oh right. Oh boy, here we go. Studios are assembling super fan focus groups to assess various materials for franchise projects to avoid social media backlash. They will just tell us if you do that, fans are going to retaliate. If it's early enough and the movie isn't finished yet, we can make those kinds of changes. Yes. And so this is an article written, uh, toxic fandoms have grown so powerful that while talent, executives, and publicists privately bemoan the issue, fear of triggering another backlash keeps several studios from speaking for this story. We started experiencing a rampage of what I would say hyper-conservative bigotry. In other words, the Acolyte was the latest high-profile target of toxic fandom. Uh, It comes to the territory, but it's gotten incredibly loud in the last couple of years, said a veteran marketing executive at a major studio. People are just out for blood regardless. They think the purity of the first version will never be replaced or you've done something to upset the canon of a beloved franchise and they're going to take you down for doing so that's exactly right i'm glad they understand so the problem is that the fan base wants you to maintain what the original story was and not change the story and this is about a toxic fan base toxic fandoms have grown so pernicious that they've become a fact of life for many and so here's the thing like before we continue anything that we say that's against what they're trying to come up with. Like I said, toxic positivity is the thing that these studios want. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what, like, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear any constructive criticism. It's because all of them are a bunch of fucking pussies. They don't, mm-hmm. they don't want to change anything. It's like, 
Just tell me it's good. All right, if we tell you it's good and your shit sucks, then the fans revolt and against you, what are you going to say? Oh, the fans are toxic. They don't know what they want, right? Wasn't there a piece of shit um, director? Oh, no, Taika Waititi. That you will know what you want when we make it for you. Some, some garbage like that, right? Like I, I'm basically paraphrasing here. He's basically yeah. saying that you don't know what you want until I make it for you. So just shut the fuck up and consume. Don't ask questions. And that's how all of them think. And the thing is that a lot of these people who are in middle management are all millennials now. Like these people who are, who are making like actual decisions, like they're all like in their like mid thirties to like forties and they're like fucking everything up and they don't care. Right. And the thing is that they're making it. It's oh, and if it's not good, it's like, oh, it's not made for you. I don't know. What do you think so far? Like with, um, with this, like, I, I know this is a topic we covered earlier, but like, yeah, like, is, is I, anything I, that you want to bring up? Uh, nothing really. Yeah, we're winning what seems like we're winning short term, but I don't expect, like, I said, like what I said, it's the financiers, like the people in charge, in charge of funding these DEI initiatives to begin with. Like, it's those people that need to be called out and need to be, uh, you know. Tell them to stop doing it. Like, put their money on stuff that actually makes them money. Or if, like, yeah, they, they definitely make money in other industries or in other endeavors. But what they do is whatever profits they make there, they put it to ESG. And they, they can just keep doing that for, like, decades to come until mm -hmm. it gets just worse and worse. So it's a short-lived breather victory, not really a long-term victory. Like, until there's more, until we see better stuff, like better movies, better games, better TV shows that go back to the good old days like 20 years ago. I just see this like a short-term respite, not really a victory. Yeah. And that's why whenever we get something good, we praise it. Yeah. Big titties and big asses in First Ascendant. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh, we need more of that. Uh, fixing and uh, making the jiggle faces look realistic in Stellar Blade. We have to praise that shit. It's because if we don't, these people that are considered, you know, that the adult actors or these dumb motherfuckers in Hollywood are just going to continue. It's like, oh, you, just, you know, if you want, if you, if you don't like it, make your own video game, make your own movie. And, and whenever we have the ability to do so, you guys are just going to tear it down or, or are you guys going to say that it's cringe or woke, right? You know, anti-woke right wing, you know, messaging or some like that. That's the reason why like whenever we see good things, we praise it. Like One Piece season one. When we see uh, what's it called again? Uh, you know, if, if even Andor, right? Even something like Andor or uh, you know, any big titty video game characters that come out that we love is like yes, you know, yes, your tits are really nice, Cindy Sweetney. Can I have more, please? All right, let's continue with this clip. And so powerful that while talent executive and publicists will privately bemoan the issue, fear of inadvertently triggering another backlash kept several studios from speaking for this story, even in the background. I think this is a good thing. Wow. We're trying to put this agenda that we want to have in like this show. The fans don't like it. Now the fans are the problem. No, you're the problem for trying to force it into the show. You either meet the audience expectations or you die. They'll just tell us if you do that, the fans are going to retaliate. Uh, this is a good decision. You know what this shows? It shows that we're winning. You don't get to morally obligate an audience to buy your product. That's not how the world works. Nobody has to do that. I'll give you an example that's not a politically charged example, which is the Sonic movie. The first Sonic movie trailer was so fucking bad that everybody on the internet <laughs> hated it. And then you know what they did? They went back to the drawing board and they fixed it and they made it the way that people wanted and now they're making Sonic 3 with Keanu Reeves' as shadow. What these companies and these writers believe is that they have some sort of moral authority to write these stories and then have everybody like them. And if you don't like them, you are seen as the problem. It doesn't matter whether you think that it should be this way or not. If the companies are making products and people don't like them, then they're not going to sell. And that's it. That's the bottom line, literally. Nothing else matters. Yep. And m money ultimately matters the most, right? These investors, yeah. they don't care. They don't care if DEI, ESG, woke, garbage propaganda works and, they making and, and they're making a shit ton of money, they're not going to say anything about it. They're like, all right, continue yeah. doing what you're doing. Right, continue yeah. doing it, right? But yeah. the fact that it's not, 
it's not making money. People are people are against it. You're losing viewership. You're losing you're losing your fucking core audience, right? It's because your core audience, a bunch of people who love Star Wars, doesn't like your shit anymore. Look, do we have nothing against like hot female protagonist women with big ass and nice titties, right? We have nothing against that. But once you make them a fucking Mary Sue and they're better than everyone else with no fucking trials and tribulations that happen in, in their fucking story arc, we're going to be like, what the hell is happening? They don't deserve it. Same thing with Captain Marvel. And then if we don't like it, we call them out. You are the problem. We are the problem. People who are paying mm-hmm. money, these multi-billion co- dollar corporations are mad at us for not spending our $20, $30 at watching your fucking movie in the theaters mm-hmm. yeah and, and, and uh, like i don't agree with asman go all the time but most of the time he has really base takes and that's the reason yeah. why we need to call them out for their fucking um uh, dumb idiotic fucking mentality thinking that they're better than us is because oh we're the creators fuck you that's a good way to lose your audience it's yeah. not made for you all right how, how, how did it work out with uh frost at g4 Mm-hmm. Right? How, how did that work out with the new uh, Charlie's Angels? Mm-hmm. Right? How how did that work out with uh, Wrinkle in Time? Whenever you say don't watch it, don't play it, make your own, we're gonna do it. But yeah, uh, but most likely he, uh, he this article just goes through what he says and uh, reiterates and oh my god, I, I, I get those so fucking cringe too. But yeah, man. But overall, it's um, I I, I agree with Asman Gold here and uh, yeah. Like, and that's the reason why. Now, here's the thing. Let's say, you know, you, did you watch this? Uh, what's, it, what's it called again? The Michael Bay Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movies? No, I am not a Ninja Turtles fan. So <laughs> I'm, I'm the wrong person to ask about that one. Okay. Uh, do, do you remember how they look like? The ugly ones? Hmm. Um... I won't be able to say which one. Yeah, so probably not. So this is oh, what was, this one. Yes. So this was what's created. Right? So this was what this was what was made. And uh and a lot of people didn't like it is because it didn't look like the turtles that we grew up with. When I first saw it, I'm like, what the fuck? Are, what the fuck is this? Because I grew up watching Turtles. I'm like, what the hell is this? What the fuck am I looking at? Like, how? Why? Why? why what? Right? And then you have this. That a fan edit. They did. And I think it, it looks pretty damn good. All right. Let me see if I can bring up the fan edit right over here. So the bottom one is the Michael Bay one. The top one is a fan edit. Yeah, right. It looks more like it looks more like the the actual Michael Bay thing, and it's it's actually legit good. And uh, there is another one too that I saw right over here. Uh, let's see if I can find that one. Like this one. This one is sort of blurry, but you can see what I'm talking about. Right. So the one on the left is the Michael Bay one. The one on the right is the one that fan fixed if michael bay listened and they're like okay I'll, we're getting a lot of backlash from the from the fans let's change it if they changed the entire thing from this piece of shit to this and this the movie would have made a lot more money because the story wasn't that bad I watched both the movies. The story wasn't that that bad. And the second one, they brought they brought in uh, Bebop and Rocksteady, which is pretty fucking cool. But the fact I can't get over how these fucking turtles look, it just looks so bad. And that's why the Sonic thing worked. Fans are always right. The customers are always right. And if you shit on us, we're not gonna watch your shit. And that's why Sonic, Sonic One, Sonic Two, and Sonic Three with Keanu Reeves is coming out, right? And I, I Sonic 1 was pretty good. Sonic 2 was pretty good as well. Of course, the whole human element of, about it sucks, but like the, the Sonic stuff about it's really, really good. There's a lot of fan service in it too, in terms of the if you love Sonic and Sega, there's a lot of like Easter eggs, which is fantastic. 